Hi there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy and today we're talking all about crackly tissue paper. It's a product we released uh, early 2012 and there's quite a lot of fun things you can do with it, putting it onto really wobbly surfaces. So we're going to be doing it onto a little canvas today. Um, these are some of our new, two, are they 4x4 four four canvases? 2x2? Two 4x4, two? Four four. yeah, that's a 4x4 four four, isn't it? And um, we're going to be putting the tissue on the front which makes the image really pop and also we can put it around the sides as well. Some of the other things that you can do with the crackly is you can use it on embellishments like these little flower bits and pieces here so you can die cut and use it for flower layers which is quite fun. Um, and here this is along the lines of what I'm planning and doing today as well except this is on a tag. So for this particular one um, the image has been coloured on the crackly and then just stuck straight down onto the tag. So you can see that you don't get any of the background paint coming through. So let's get started. So today to make this project some of the things that um, we're going to use are a 4x4 canvas. I'm using this little one. We have quite a few different sizes in stock at the moment. 6x6, 8x8, 6x4. So check them out. They're cheap as chips and really nice sizes to work with and they're really well constructed. So that's the cap, the substrate. Um, <clears throat> we're going to use crackly tissue paper. This uh, comes in a pack of 20 sheets, A5, and uh, it's really different tissue paper to what you expect it to be. It's called crackly because the sound it makes is very crackly. It's a bit more robust than you would expect a normal tissue paper to be. Uh, I'll explain more about that later. These are the stamps that I'm using today. It's Limparella Set 13. I like this one because it fits perfectly on the canvas and there's quite easy areas to colour in with it as well. But I do love her and I love the key. And those two little chicky babes face each other so they're going to look really nice on the sides of the canvas. Um, of course you'll need acrylic blocks. Uh, Versafine ink seems to work better on the um, crackly than archival. I'm going to demonstrate that to you later. Piece of paper for masking and I quite like to stamp when I'm stamping on tissue onto a piece of kitchen paper so it's handy to have some of that and of course you'll need some fresco finish acrylic paints. So first thing we're going to do is take our piece of crackly and we're going to use the width of the edge of the canvas as a guide so we get a size and we're just going to fold that there and then we'll concertina that so that you've got your tissue paper that is all marked up ziggity zaggity like that okay so you've I've just started at one end and folded it up and that uh, is ready to stamp so when I'm going to stamp, I find if I put a piece of paper, um, kitchen towel underneath, then it's a little bit easier to um, lean onto it. It's just nice to have a soft area underneath. Uh, we're going to start with these two ladies that kind of face each other because they're going to look really cool on the spine. So I'm using Versafine. Versafine is an oil based permanent ink. It's so is archival but the Versafine seems to not travel so much. I think it's a slightly thicker formula and so it seems to stay put when you stamp the image onto the tissue paper. Obviously tissue paper is quite porous and the ink can sink into it and bleed. So if you have the slightly thicker formulation it seems to just give you a better result. Now I'm actually going to show you the difference between that and archival so you can see it with your own eyes. So we'll just do one more of these in the archival. Okay, so the Versafine is a kind of a totally different black to the archival. It's a much um, blacker black. The archival is a very purply black. And you can see all the detail is right in the, the roof of the building 
and everywhere on her nice hat there in the archival it all just sort of fills in um, and so the ink suggests that the ink is still traveling on the tissue paper. You can use a heat gun and zap it to stop the ink traveling but the VersaFine still stays much sharper than the archival. Now the archival, I'm not going to heat set that because I've got one I've prepared earlier, but the archival takes a lot longer to heat set than the, sorry, the VersaFine takes a lot longer to heat set than the archival because I think it's got a slightly higher oil content. So make sure, just watch it really closely as you're heat setting it and it will go slightly lighter as it dries and I tend to heat set from both sides. So that's stamping that at that end. I don't know. Maybe that shows you the detail a bit better. Okay. Oops. Now, next thing. On this area here, I'm going to stamp the key which is used on the spine of the project. Okay. Here it is. So you can see I'm gonna this is where I'm heading. The ladies are gonna go the ladies are gonna go on the side, and then the keys are gonna go on the top and the bottom. So let's stamp the keys. Now the way to get a really random pattern with the keys is to kind of start stamping in the middle. So back to the VersaFine. I do use, I don't want to, I don't want to mislead you and think that I don't like archival. I like archival, I just don't like it on this crackly tissue paper. So um, where I do use it a lot is on top of the paint. Whenever I stamp an image with fresco finish, I always stamp over the top with archival ink um, because it's very fast drying and it's a, it's a bit faster drying than the VersaFine. So there are, you know, every ink has its, its uh, pluses and minuses. But I think what we've noticed is that for the Limparella stamps, the VersaFine gives you a really nice, sharp detail because she has such amazingly complicated images going on there. Right, now I'm just using that bit of paper to mask the edges here so that I can put more parts of my keys in there. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just randomly building up the keys stamped onto this, onto these little bits here. Okay, so you get the idea. Because you don't want to stamp, if I'm stamping there, you don't want the head of the key going over one of those images, then that's why I'm using the paper to mask it off. So you end up with a piece of tissue paper like this. Okay, So it's got all the keys randomly stamped and the two ladies facing each other. Now I've also then taken this and put it back on here and folded it so that I can see uh, the exact length of the sides of that little canvas block there. Right, so we could cut it out just using scissors, but I want to show you how to pluck tissue. You haven't lived until you know how to do this. So everything's heat set beautifully, and I've just got some water and a paintbrush, and all I'm going to do is run it along the lines here, the fold lines. So you do that, and then you can just pluck your tissue, pull it apart. It's just the easiest way. And you get really nice soft edges when you do it that way. Instead of having a, a boring straight cut line, you've got really nice soft edges. And this is the plucking bit. You can just pull right up to that wet line and pull all those little bits off. Now we're going to go and do that all around all the edges and down all the joins. Okay, so easy. You don't have to be perfect about it because this, these images don't have to fit perfectly on the spine, but if you want to use it as a guide there, so you can see how much plucking you're allowed to do. And then you just keep positioning it, and obviously you're going to need to wet along that edge there so that you can get a nice soft line. And you will end up with this. So you'll have all your little pieces 
nice and random and they're going to fit on the sides there easily. Okay, so that's making the sides and the tops and the bottom. Now for the image on the front, what we're going to do is stamp her right in the middle of the tissue paper and you can see exactly where she fits. See how that's a great fit for this size canvas. And then the same thing, we're going to get the water and you just want to run it along the edges there. Around the top. Down the sides there. And then you can, again, just pull it out. How cool is that? It's so much better than cutting. I used to do this a lot back in the day. I used to work with tissue loads years ago. I hope from the sound of the tissue you can kind of get a sense of how it is quite a stiff tissue. It's kind of coated and so um, it's a great feature because when we go to stick this down later on it's a lot more robust. Most tissue papers totally collapse as soon as they get wet. This one doesn't. Right, so there we've got a nice randomly torn image to fit onto our canvas. Right, so what we're going to do is bake, base coat our canvas. Now this canvas is, has already got gesso on it so when you put a colour like London Bus which is a translucent straight on there you're going to see the true nature of that colour. Okay, because it's a translucent so you've got the white will um, come through quite happily. Um, if I'm working with different colours, uh, if I wanted to do say a blue canvas then you can start, I mean cracker, you can use any colour, you know, it's not, it's, it doesn't matter but obviously opaque colours will, will um, give a much higher coverage than the translucents. I'm sure if you've seen some of our other videos you'll be um, starting to understand the difference between them. But if you're painting, say I had a yellow colour underneath and then I painted this London bus on top, I would get orange. So um, if you want to see London bus in its entirety, proper 100% true colour, then it needs to have white underneath it. So the, the sides on this can be darker than the front uh, because if we're going to put an image like this on the canvas we just want to be a little bit careful about how much colour we have and where we have it. So I started like that and then I'm going to just water this down a bit and pull it through and you see just by watering it down a little bit I can not have such concentrated colour on the front there. It's only barely lighter isn't it? I'm going to take my paper towel and knock it back a bit because I just don't want that colour to be overly, see how that just knocks it back a little bit? I don't want the colour on the front to be really really dominant. Oh that looks perfect. Right, so just use up some of these on the sides and I'm just going to set that aside to dry up while we move on to the next bit. Okay, so that's all cool. Oh, I can't stop fiddling. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is work on putting these guys onto the sides of the canvas. Now, if I stuck that directly onto the canvas as it is, the blue in this case, or in, in my case the red, is going to come straight through the, the tissue paper and show on her face. So what we want to do is give her some skin tone so that that doesn't happen and it gives it makes a highlight or a feature of her face. You could use this whole technique on the whole piece if you want but I kind of only wanted her face to pop. So the way we do it is first of all we're going to paint her face. Now I'm using vintage lace because it's kind of a nice um, instant skin tone colour but you could mix a different different tone creamy if you want. 
if we painted this on the top, vintage lace is an opaque and it will just obliterate all of the stamped detail. So by flipping it over and colouring her face from behind, we will sort of mask it off. I need to just thin that out a little bit. And it means that her face then will pop from the other side. So I'm just going up to the line. When I turn that over, there you go, you can kind of see her face is a little bit more white in that area. So you can still see the paint coming through from the back. Same on this one. Okay, so now we've got two cheeky babes with white faces. Right, so next step is I'm going to stick this onto my canvas, but if I stuck that directly onto the canvas as it is, I would see all the tissue looking a little bit opaquey and white. So to blend the tissue in, I have another trick, and that is go back to your puddle of red paint, and we're just going to bring that straight over the top from the reverse. layer on that one. So this is exactly the same colour as I've got on the canvas, the London bus. Okay, now that is all ready to go on the canvas and we're going to use satin glaze as our adhesive to stick those on the side. Now I'm going to put loads of satin glaze on here because the tissue tends to sort of suck it up a bit. So put that on. Now I want that one to face inwards. So I'm just positioning it there and then using the satin glaze to glue that down but to make it blend in of course we need a layer of the London bus on the top as well. Now I probably don't really want to get it on her face too much. Now if you've chosen an opaque colour, when you come over the top here, you're going to obliterate your stamped image. So it's quite a good idea if you're doing this technique and coming back to your red bus, your London bus, that you use a translucent in the very first instance so that you're not going to lose the detail of that stamped image. Well, you see how her face really pops out now. Okay, same on the other side. So, oops, I've just got vintage lace everywhere. So, some more glaze. I've got vintage lace on that as well. What am I like? I'm just going to paint that a little bit red first. Glaze. Stick it on there. Okay, that's where my little vintage lace corner is going to be. We'll have to <laughs> deal with that later. <laughs> okay, so we've got the ladies on the two sides. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the keys top and bottom. Okay, so you can see on the canvas here that she's got some slightly pink cheeks. So the thing with painting on the back 
is you've got to paint upside down. So the colours that you want to see the most on the top side, you need to paint first. So if we start with that pinky tone, I've got a little bit of vintage lace in my brush left over from before. Just aim for her cheek, bitty bobs on the side there. If you sort of have a look, flip it over, you can see if you're doing good or bad. I'm just removing some of that. So you kind of want a shadowy bit along the side of her face. <laughs> it's a bit lower on that side than the other side, so that means I've got to bring this down here. Okay, so that's the first layer. Then I'm just going to come over the whole thing with the vintage lace. So this is going to be her skin toned. Now, I mean, I'm doing this quite quick. Okay, so when you flip it over, you can see that the face has been um, really highlighted by that colour. Right, now the, the roof on her house also is going to really pop. See, what I'm sort of trying to explain to you, I don't feel like I'm doing a very good job of it, but the red paint that we've got on the canvas is going to come straight through this area it's going to come straight through her face if we put a layer of opaque paint there it won't and that's how that bit pops out so i also want the roof on it the little building on her house the churchy thing to also pop out so if i take the vintage lace all the way up over that churchy thing then the white the fine detail white lines will show through you can see them already. You can see how they just, it highlights the detail of that stamp perfectly. You don't have to do it in a white opaque. You could do it in like a haystack or ice blue, any other colour. But just because I'm for speed, I'm doing it in, in the same colour. But also, obviously, the lighter the colour you go, the, um, the more obvious the highlights will be. So Snowflake would be a much brighter highlight than what I'm using here. I'm going to set a little bit at the very top. Okay, now this is also, the little postmark, is quite a cool thing to accentuate. So if I make that whitish now, then I could come over the top from the other side with a translucent. And of course the translucents being see-through are not going to detract from this detail of the stamped image. So see, I need to take it right up to the edge. Just when you turn it over, you can see exactly if you've missed a bit. Keep watering your paint down if it, mine's drying out a bit. Just keep it nice and loose. There we go. So what I'm going to plan on do is I will pull a different, I'll put another colour, a wash of colour over the top of that so I could use like bright blue and you'll still see the detail of the stamp but if I put the, the opaque on the top I would, I'd lose all that. So those are the two most important details. Now what I'm going to do is colour some of the other bits and pieces in. So I'm going to colour the whole thing from the back first. So let's go to a blue. And we'll do this collar bit here. Now this is a translucent. So if I put that on top of my red canvas, that looks blue now. But if I put it out on top of a red canvas, it might, with the red coming through, it might look a bit more purple. So you can, you can um, alter that by having a different blue, like a more opaque blue. Or what I'm going to do is actually a couple of layers of it. I could mix some snowflake in with it and make it more opaque. But you see what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to paint it from the front and the back. So if I put a layer of that on the front, it's not going to detract from my stamped image because it's a translucent, but it will accentuate the colour a little bit more so it will look brighter on the front. So the next step is to start thinking about the highlights in the background.
So let's start with the brightest colour first, which is Zesty Zing. So I'm just going to put some of this on the area here in the background so that we kind of create, see, can you see on this sample here, you create a sort of a warmth coming through. And again, I'm painting upside down, so if this goes on first, and I'm going to bring in a bit of, um, what's that one, smoked paprika. And just starting to work that around the edges so you can keep flipping it over and having a look at how the two are working together. So it's kind of a bit better where you, you sort of want it wet and wet if you can. That first bit I put on dried quite quickly. So I'm trying not to have, uh, trying to get my yellow wet at the very edges where it's blending into the oranges. Okay, so it looks really wishy-washy from the front because I'm painting it on the back. But when I put another layer on the front, it will look a lot less wishy-washy. Or if we put the satin glaze over the top, it will also look a lot less wishy-washy. But by painting, the whole point of this exercise is by painting from sort of both sides, you create a much better depth of colour than you would if you just painted on the top or if you just painted on the back. And of course we can go right the way over the top of that postmark because it's protected, because there's an opaque there. So I'm just putting um, smoked paprika at the very edges, trying to create that sense of depth. And we're just going to get it down in behind the churchy thing. Okay, now let's come on to the front. So that is pretty much dry straight away. Okay, and now I'm going to flip it over and start doing the same thing on the front but I'm keeping my paint much more watery because if I keep the paint really watery it increases its translucency and it means that I'm not going to diminish the detail of the stamped image. I'm starting to build the depth again. Probably got it a bit too watery now. So you just keep adding your colour. Blending. Get the idea? It's fun. Right. Okay, I'm going to make that blue. So I'm going to go back to the beach hut. And I want to water it down. Oh, it's gone green. <laughs> There's yellow in my brush, isn't there? So it's gone a bit more of that patina green, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. So depending on how much water, that depends on how deep a colour you get. So I sort of putting it on, taking it off, adding a bit more. trying to get the right amount of water. I've got quite a big brush for this little space. So I've sort of got a little bit too much water on my brush. There we go, starting to get the hang of it. And let's just put another layer down there while we're here. Cool, okay, we're getting there. Right, so for this to blend onto the canvas, remember I need to paint all the surrounding edge the same colour as the canvas so that it blends in really well. So again, we're going to go to the back. But one really big tip, 
If we want to maintain the integrity of these colours on the front, so the yellows and the oranges, it's going to be a really smart idea to paint white over the top of this whole section here. You can see that from this side I can actually see the writing of the stamped image. So if that gets stuck onto the canvas, that means that the red paint is still going to come through. I'm still going to be able to see through it because the Zesty Zing and the Smoked Paprika are both translucents. So to make them protected from the canvas colour, we're just going to put a layer of snowflake on the back. You could do this, you could paint your edges first if you want. If you want to paint these edges London bus first you can or you could paint them afterwards doesn't really matter but you don't want to get any snowflake on these sections where I'm putting the London bus right so you see that is going to do exactly the same thing as the other sides when we did the tops and the sides but let me go to the snowflake probably would be a good idea to have a clean brush for this and we're just going to protect all of this section a layer of snowflake those colours on the front now are really going to pop. Let me dry it. I haven't been overly bothered about drying this as I work because there's not it, the paints do tend to dry so fast on their own anyway so it's not really a biggie. Plus it's going to get wet again when I stick it onto the canvas so I'm not I don't really muck about drying it heaps. Well, now I'm just going to make this that little bit more red so it all blends in. So it's just another way to utilise your translucent paints. Because it's a real shame if you stamp an image and you lose some of the detail from how you use your opaques on top, it's a bit of a shame. It's nice to try and keep that image as sharp as you can. Now we can still always come back over, add more paints on the top here if we want. We can still muck about with all these colours. I might do that a bit more when I actually put it on the canvas. So now when you stick this guy onto the canvas you want to make sure that you put it the right way so we've got a lady facing inwards and a lady facing inwards which means that that is where your piece needs to get positioned there now let me just put a load of satin glaze on there and this process happens a lot easier if your image is quite wet with the glaze and if the canvas is quite wet with the glaze. So I put a healthy amount of glaze on the canvas so that it can really sink in and then start sticking this down. Now this is where our tissue paper comes into its own. It is very robust. It's not a normal tissue paper. If you had a normal tissue paper, once you stick it down, you've stuck it down and that's it. With this one, you can reposition it. So you can peel it back up and stick it down again until you're happy with it. And I've actually found that if I deliberately do that, I don't get any air bubbles. It seems to like being picked up and stuck back down. Now I've got a bit of red in my brush so her face is turning a little bit 
red. So I probably should be a tidy crafter and use a clean brush every time. But that's not really the reality of crafting, is it? And as this dries out, any other little wrinkles you've got should disappear. I can see I've got an air bubble under there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's stick that down. And you see, this is why we went for a nice strong tissue paper so that you don't have to be too precious about it. And I love how because we've painted the um, tissue paper on the front and the back, you get a slightly darker shading where the tissue paper meets the canvas in the background there. Can you see that? So just along the edges here, you're getting a really cool shadow effect, which is quite nice. Right, I need to sort her face out because she is getting, she's going grey. <laughs> there we go, now she's a bit happier. If you're going to dry this with a heat gun, again, just be a bit careful. It's one of those things where you kind of, probably better to let it dry on its own. Just wave the heat gun gently over it. Don't be too vigorous. If you hold it too close, you're going to dry the whole thing way too fast. So take your time. And it's a satin glaze, so it's not drying with a really glossy finish. It's the first coat of satin always dries quite matte. So you end up with this whole thing blended in quite nicely. So you see how that it's, it's not shiny anymore. Our satin glaze is quite what I would call matte on the first coat, but the more layers you build up of satin glaze, the more glossy it goes. Now one of the things that I like to do with this, and you can probably see the difference here, the colours on this one are much brighter and poppier, and the reason that they are brighter is because I've actually glossed it. So I've put probably three or four coats of gloss glaze over the top of this, this section here. And when you apply a gloss glaze to our chalky paints, um, it, more light reflects back at your eyes and because more light is reflected back to your eyes you your eye perceives the colour to be a lot brighter than what it really is so if you want our matte paints to look brighter then you need to use a gloss glaze on top Okay, so there's a finishing off few little bits for finishing this off I've stamped over the top with a script just to sort of blend things in a little bit so we've still got to do that but before I do that I'm just going to add a little bit more detail um, and a little bit more shadowing with my translucent paints right so I've just got a little puddle of water on the craft sheet here and a few extra a few colors this one is South Pacific so I'm pick, I've got my brush quite wet, picking up a little bit of South Pacific and I'm going to try and add a little bit more depth in around his neck. So all of this is happening um, just to try and accentuate some of the colours a little bit. Okay, I'll do that on there. South Pacific is quite uh, translucent. I'll do it on there. So I put the colour on and then I get my paintbrush a little bit wetter and soften it out with a wet paintbrush. I'm just making some shaded areas and then if you want to knock it back again remove the paint off your brush onto a paper towel and you can suck colour back away. So that's him. Let's do the same with brown shed. So wet brush, pick up the tiniest bit of colour and I just want to try and create a little bit of depth if possible in and around there. So put it on and then with your brush damp soften it out. This is the sort of where you start titivating really. My brush has all gone weirdo. Let's see. There we go. If you add a shad shadow around the edge, particularly if you've got a person like this, then it just makes them stand out and be the focal point a little bit more. Put it on, wet, cleaner water, and soften that out there. See, it just blends by softening it out. 
It's actually quite cool this because the texture of the canvas is starting to come through the tissue. It's, as you probably are aware, it's very, very difficult to stamp directly onto a canvas. A little, you know, they tend to just buckle up and underneath you. So if you can do it this way, it looks like you've stamped on the canvas when you actually haven't. More water, soften that. Right, let's see if we can create a few more highlights, a bit more zesty zing in here. Just lighten that area up a little bit. And where it meets the wet brown shed, it's going to blend into, into each other anyway, the two colours will. And see, just a damp brush, and I'm removing it off, off those words. Because it will dry matte, even though it's a translucent, it will still dry quite matte. And you could do this whole thing on the face as well. You could build a lot more shadowing on the side of the face if you wish. Uh, something like Irish cream. But you really only want a teeny tiny bit. And Irish cream is a bit more of an opaque, so you've got to be careful. So make sure you've really got it watered down. So if I kind of go down the side of the face and then wet brush, blend it in again, soften it back, remove quite a bit of it off. I'm, so, I'm kind of creating a little bit of a shadow. This is the fun bit, I like this bit. All sort of playing around. And these stamps that Lynn Perella does, there's often lots of shading on them. You can see the little dots and things that are on there. That gives you an idea of where to add some shading. Just don't want that getting too opaque. So it's the whole put it on, take it off, and leave a hint of the colour there. Tap, tap, tap. That's better, isn't it? Okay, I think we're just about there. Glazing. Before I do any stamping over the top, it needs a layer of glaze over it if you want the colours to really pop. So gloss glaze is the way to go. Let me just zap it and make sure that's all a bit dry. on there, spread it about. Now I'm just going to keep the actual square part of the image glossed. And again the gloss glaze is quite cool, you can put thin layers of it on and build them up. So you can build them up to whatever level of gloss you prefer. So the first one, the first coat, when this dries off, it will look more like a satin. But every subsequent layer, it will get a little bit glossier. Now, as a general rule of thumb, the way the gloss glaze looks when it's wet is how glossy it will eventually look if you build two or three coats. So that's one coat. And again, I prefer to leave this to do to dry naturally. It's not I'm not a big fan of drying glazes rapidly. So just be gentle, especially if you've got one of those the long heat guns, um, the Milwaukee style, they're a lot, the heat that comes out is a lot more concentrated, so you have to be really gentle with those. You 
can see the bits I miss now. The other thing that's interesting about applying gloss glaze is it makes the black stamped um, section really pop as well. So if you can take your glaze right up to the edge of the stamp design, then the black sections will really look a lot better. Right, I'm going to go ahead and do this and then we're going to come back and finish up with the last little bit of stamping on top. Right, so the last little step for this is to add some accents with um, a stamp. This one's Mini 62 and it's got some nice script on the back of it. Right, I'm just going to ink it up. You don't want, well it's painted up, you don't want loads of paint on there. So I sort of work the paint into my cut and dry foam and then tap it onto the stamp. And I'm just going to randomly apply in a few places so it doesn't need to be perfect perfect. Just a little bit of something to give it a bit of a lift. Bit of a sucker for script stamps as you know. So take it round the sides here as well. And it just helps blend things in so it doesn't look, I don't know, it just looks a bit more interesting. And on that side. And of course, I mean, when you're doing something like this, you can take your canvas and you can embellish it and do all kinds of other things to it. Um, if you wish, you don't have to leave it as a finished canvas at this point. You can keep going, add more stuff to it. So that's the snowflake paint on there. Just adding a little bit of, a little bit more detail. And then to finish it off, we're going to add some treasure gold. This one's Spanish topaz. It's quite, it's a colour I didn't really think I'd like a lot because it's a very, very brassy, yellowy gold but it pops on loads of surfaces so I just want to drag it over there a little bit I just try to catch the corners you can use your fingers if you want to apply it as well So you can see a little bit goes a long way. This is sort of like one dunking of the brush. And if you want it a lot more concentrated, then just stick your finger in and get a proper edge in a couple of places. And there you have it. So, crackly, you can do that whole technique onto onto um, onto your tags you can do it onto canvases like this all kinds of all kinds of areas but it's a really nice way to build depth from both the front and the back oh, we'll see you next time on the paper artsy channel thanks for dropping by